you have extra medals laying around the house that were won by your kids or by yourself that you don't know really what to do with, but you don't want to throw them away? In this video, we're going to make this metal hanger that you can display on the wall. Do you have kids who are involved in a lot of activities and tend to bring home medals from those activities and you're not sure where to put them? I have four boys, they all wrestle. We bring home medals frequently and they are just piling up. So today I'm going to make a display to hang on the wall so that each kid can have their medals in their room. So I went upstairs in my loft and found this rough piece of walnut. And to start off, we're going to have to surface plane this down. Uh, we're going to take it down to three-fourths of an inch. So let's get started. Okay, so I just got done planing this board and I noticed after I planed it that there are a few splits coming in from the end. Um, they come in a good ways into about right in here somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark that so I know somewhat have a good idea of where I can start with my piece and where I can end with my piece. So I need to get 28 inches to make this. And that's going to take me about right up to this knot right here that we knocked out while we were in the middle of planning. So I'm going to have to use this middle section of the board right here to make this metal display because as you can see this other end, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a big split that goes right in here from this end and from the split to the knot there's just there's nothing I can work with there. So I'm going to have to take a section out of the center of this board in order to make this um, this metal shelf out of or metal display out of um, out of this piece, which I don't want to plane another piece, so we're going to make this work. So the next thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to cut one end and then measure and cut the other end. So we're aiming for 28 inches. Uh, the rod that the metals are going to hang on is 26. That gives me an inch on each end. Uh, just I think aesthetically it'll look better if there's a little bit of wood outside of where the the uh, metal hanging rod is going to be mounted. So that's where we're going to go to next. <laughs>
Okay, so we now have this board. Uh, it is 28 inches long. It is 10 and 3 eighths wide. I had to go a little narrower to clean up the edges, um, which is okay. I should have plenty of space. I, I kind of arbitrarily came up with 10 and a half just because my board was pretty close to that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to take this to my CNC router and I'm actually gonna engrave a quote along the top of here. And, um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount this rod. And this is just a, a curtain rod that you can get on Amazon. And you can see, let's see if we can show this to you. Um, it'll mount across here towards the bottom. It will, um, so you'll be able to display the, the words, the quote that I want. And then below that, the rod will hang there. And that rod then will, um, will hold all the, of the metals. So you can just drape them over that. You can run them through the rod and then set it in the, the bracket. Um, you can kind of tie them into themselves and let them hang. So there's a couple different ways that you can do that. So that's what we're going to do. Now one thing, I don't know if you can see this. Um, I accidentally bought a, a, like an antique bronze color and I wanted it black. So um, actually, I don't think they had black. I bought these a while ago and... Um, I was going to do this around Christmas time and never got to it. Um, so I'm just getting to it now and I realized that it's not really the color I wanted. So what I'm going to probably do here tonight uh, before I'm done is spray paint these so that they look black instead. And then um, I also have to prep the board. Um, I have to put a mask on it uh, so that when I cut it on the CNC, I can come back and spray paint the letters uh, to give it, uh, make it easier to read. So I'm gonna do that and then probably call it a day and come back tomorrow and hopefully cut this out on the CNC and, and get it looking nice and good and, and ready to hang this rod on. Okay, so we're back at it today. Uh, we are going to start off by cutting some keyhole slots in the board on my CNC router. That'll make it easier to hang. I like, when, when I hang things, I like it so it can stay flush to the wall. By doing those keyhole slots, it allows me to do that. Um, you could always use a more traditional sawtooth style hanger that you see often on the back of picture frames um, or some kind of a D-ring type of hook that you could, you could hang from as well. Um, but I, this, I have this, this router, so it allows me to do this. Um, so we're gonna get started with that and then we'll get into the actual cutout of the quote that I'm gonna put on this as soon as that's done. So here we go. So I'm going to actually put two of those keyhole slots on the back. 
Uh, I, a lot of times with things I hang, I only put one, I put it in the center and it's, it goes horizontal and it allows you to shift it left to right a little bit to get that balance right. Because this is going to be hanging metals and the balance could be completely off, I thought it needs to have two contact points in the wall. So uh, that's what we're going to do. I have one spot lined up over on the left side here. I got another spot um, set for the, the right side. I made them 16 apart, 16 inches apart, so that um, I can hang it on the wall and hopefully put it in two studs. Uh, can't guarantee that'll happen, just depends on where the space is on the wall, but uh, we'll see. So we're gonna get cut in here. So for the quote that I'm going to cut out on the other side of this board, I am using a uh, 60 degree V groove bit made by Amana Tool. And I get those from tools today and it's a really great place to buy bits. You can see, let's see if we can get this to focus here. Maybe. There we are. Oh, lost it. You can see it has a, a knife insert that you can change out. Uh, really nice feature. Uh, if you do end up getting one of these, one thing, always double check to make sure that the set screw is tight. I had one where it started cutting and it somehow had been loosened and the, the knife kind of flipped and started making a really weird cut and it really it messed up the piece I was working on. I had to start all over. So um, just a little tip, if you do use those uh, insertable blades in the router bits, that is something that you want to double check every time. So here we go. Okay, so I got the bit all changed out. I flipped the work piece over. And one thing I didn't mention is you can get those, um, the, the bits from Tools Today. I'll have a link in down in the comments uh, in the description of the video and um, it is an affiliate link so if you choose to buy something from there it helps us out a little bit it won't cost you any more money but we really appreciate the support so take a look down in the comments if you are have any need for router bits drill bits things like that because tools today is a great place to get them here we go
Okay, so the router's done making this quote cut um, by uh, Dan Gable. Uh, I think my son will appreciate that when he has his medals hanging on it. So uh, the next step is for me to hit this with paint. Uh, it'll just fill in the unmasked part that got cut away. And I have to decide what color paint I'm going to use because I, on walnut, I've used black in the past. I've used gold in the past. I don't love either one. Uh, the black, it looks sharp, but it's kind of hard to read. Uh, it blends too much in with the walnut. So I have to give that some thought and make a, de a decision on which one to use. So um, while I'm thinking of it, uh, I masked this off with a product called Oracal, and it's number 651. Uh, I've tried other um, products by this company for the CNC, and they work okay. There's one, I don't know the number, um, I've seen it uh, on other videos, and things like that, that um, it's blue. And I've used it and I've had some problems with that, that one um, peeling up a little bit around the letters. And if it peels up, you're done. I mean, there, there's no fixing it really. So uh, it's really important that you get one that will adhere real well and hold up. So this white one, the 651 is uh, it's a lot more thick uh, material, so I think it holds a little bit better. It doesn't peel back near as easily. It takes a little bit more to get off, but it, it's not unbearable or anything like that. Um, it's a really nice product. So uh, that product is available on Amazon. Uh, check the affiliate link in the description below, and you can get a hold of that and start using it if you are doing any CNC work where you want to mask things off. So we're going to get started on a painting here and we'll see how it turns out. So after giving it some thought, I decided to actually try painting this with white. Uh, I think it'll contrast nice with the walnut and should look pretty good. So we're going to hit it with paint right now and see how it comes out here after it dries. Okay, so I can already tell this is prob probably going to require a couple of different coats. So uh, I'm going to let this dry and we'll probably come back to this in the morning and um, hit it again. Okay, so we are now done painting and we're going to tear this mask off and see how all the lettering turned out. So here we go. Okay, so I think I got everything peeled off of here. Now I am going to have to sand this. A um, little bit of paint bled through. Uh, I think it was a little bit wet when I was peeling it off. So I'm going to have to get that off of here. And then we will route the corners and we're ready to put finish on it. So uh, it's starting to come together. I think the white paint was a good choice on the walnut.
So now we're going to start with the sanding of this. Uh, we'll uh, try to clean this up a little bit. I had a little bit of paint. It was a little wet when I took the mask off and it got on the wood. So hopefully we can get that off and get this thing ready for finish. So now I'm going to apply finish to this metal display and I'm going to use uh, polycrylic. Uh, I like the quality of finish it gives and um, I think it'll do a good job. So I'm going to actually spray that on. You can buy it in a spray can so uh, no brush marks or anything like that. Uh, should turn out really nice here so we're going to get started doing that. So the uh, finish left a little bit of a rough uh, texture to it. It was a water-based finish, so the, um, the, it, it needed a little bit of sanding in between coats. I used the 500 grit sandpaper, um, just lightly sanded. You don't want to press too hard when you do something like that, just enough to knock the rough spots off. And I will clean this dust off and then I will recoat it with another coat of spray. finish is all dry and we're going to attach this uh, curtain rod hanger so that you can hang metals from it and then we'll be all done. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure between these two brackets so I can determine the spacing left to right. This is about 23 inches. Um, I want to center that. I know that the overall is 28, so the difference is 5, which means the center of these need to be at 2.5 inches from the ends. So I'll come in 2.5 inches from the ends, and then I'm going to just position it where I think it'll look good, and get a measurement for the height off the end, or off the bottom, so that can be consistent. So I think an inch off the bottom for the, the whole 2.5 inch from the end should give us the right spacing. So I'm going to make marks for that. <clears throat> and I'll, I will mark the bottom hole. And then I will attach it. And then the top hole should kind of set itself.
a screw bro. <laughs> hmm. Here is the final product with the metals hanging on it. Uh, this is in my son's room. Uh, it's a little messy. I'm trying not to show some of it, but you can see the metals can just tie on to the bar and just loop it through itself. A few of these like this, um, it just he just slid them on. I think they were hanging a little bit better that way. So this is how it turns out. Uh, works quite well. I actually have to make three more of them because I have four boys and they all um, are going to need them eventually, I'm sure. So uh, hopefully this was information, good information. And um, if you liked it, please hit the like, subscribe button, watch some more of our videos. And um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to ask down in the comments section. Thanks.